what's the one thing that could really be getting in the way of your productivity? And when I say productivity, you know, I'm speaking from the space of escape and arrival. And what I mean when I say escape and arrival is, you know, each and every one of us wakes up every single day and we're in a specific space and time in our life. We're in a specific space and time in our business. So we want to escape that and we want to arrive to a better place. And that's what we constantly do. That's really the, the definition of growth is escape and arrival. And what I want to do is really support you in your all aspects of your business, quite frankly, but in your Facebook ads specifically, but the principles are universal. Whether you're in person or whether you are online, whether it's your email, you're going to find that these principles that I share with you, whether it's with the consumer, whether it's with recruiting, it's it's all ancient history. We're, we're, we're kind of in this interesting dynamic. It's the polarity of where we're at. You know, today you better be a digital marketer, but at the same time, you've got to keep the ancient principles of human behavior that will be constant and carry them forward. So, um, you know, Ryan had shared um, some, some recent results that he's experiencing from uh, his uh, Facebook ads. And there are many people that I have worked with and am working with. And, and by the way, this is not a shameless plug to, hey, come coach with me. I'm, I'm telling you, if you pay attention, real close attention to the videos that I post, if you go to my blog and you just take action based on what I'm sharing, you're going to get the results that you want. You're going to get a result that's different from what you've been experiencing. And I'm just gonna share with you, quite frankly, the reason people don't is because we have this old recording that runs in our head, this sales rap. And I've got news for you. In 2017 and beyond, the day of selling people, the days of selling people, their history. Everyone wants, and you hear me say this stuff, and, and, I, and I wanna just, you know, keep bringing it home to you so that maybe it will be the new recording that goes over the old recordings that are actually holding you back from having a successful business. Or maybe it's the old recordings that are keeping you from the ceiling that you're at right now so you can really start to scale. And here's the number one thing that you've got to remember. And I've written down nine things here of, of, of what you, you really need to take a look at that can just change everything for you. It, it, it really, really can. Is, is, you know, first of all, again, everyone wants to buy. No one wants to be sold. And you know this, yet we are leading with these cheesy sales languages. We go to seminars and, and, and listen, there's all kinds of great information out there, but we hold on to that cheesy sales language. And we're trying to sell, sell, sell. But then let's go back to ancient principles. Let's go back to what sales is really about, all about. No, like, trust. Where is the word sell in there? Now, here's what's interesting. When we state no, like, and trust, I mean, think about the decisions that you make. I mean, are you enamored when someone is just putting the sales wrap on you? Does it feel just so wonderful? Yeah, I mean, sure, we're salespeople. Um, we're leaders that are trying to attract agents to our organization. And, and so you can understand, you can respect it, but there comes a point where it's just like, you know, get out of the way. How about someone that you feel good about interacting with? Certainly they need to be competent. That's just expected. They need to be informational. They need to be relevant. Those things all matter. But listen, tell me this. If you don't at some level know someone, like someone, or trust them, those three, are you going to buy from them? And if you are, more power to you. But you know what? I doubt it. I doubt it because we're in the information overload age. I don't have to put up with your sales rap. The consumer doesn't have to put up with your in your face, come buy from me, Facebook ad um, uh, jargon that continues to happen. I hear people spend tons of money and I hear people say my ads don't work. Well, yeah, because you're getting it. It's all backwards. And I have documented, I'm going to end this video here with a case study of a client I've just worked with for 12 weeks. And we've got case studies of what's actually happened when you meet the consumer, you meet your audience, you meet your recruit, you meet the seller where they're at. See, what the big mistake is, we've been given this language, we've been given this path to follow that, that, that's all about get people to meet you where you're at. Well, it's not all about you. 
It's not. It's all about them. It's all about the consumer. It's all about an agent you're trying to recruit. It's all the same. I mean, if you're a broker, owner, manager, and you're watching this and you want to recruit real estate agents, well, guess what? Your agents are recruiting buyers and sellers. You guys, the, the principles are universal. So here's what I want to give to you is this. First question is this. Do you know your audience? Do you know your audience? And here's what I mean by your audience. Think about this. If there's 100,000 people in a marketplace, you know, 90% of them are indifferent. They're not in the consideration phase. They're not even thinking of buying or selling, but you're running that one size fits all language at them. And sure, you're probably getting some sales. Maybe you have a great business that's, that's going on right now, but you want to know what? You can 10X that thing if you get the language right. Think about this. Every choice we make is based on words, words we read, words we hear, every single choice. So on a side note there, tell me about your copywriting skills. What words are you using? You're using the same old stuff. So everyone wants to buy, no one wants to be sold. And then the, the next one that you've heard me say over and over again, I really want you to look at this stuff. Maybe, you know, take some time. And again, you've got, you've got great scripts, you've got great dials, you've got great objection handlers. You know, put them aside for a moment. Just put them aside. And now focus on everyone wants to buy, no one wants to be sold. That's number one. Number two, people choose with their heart and they justify it with logic. Now bring your scripts and your dialogues. Bring your marketing message. Bring the headline of your Facebook ad. Bring the copy in the caption of your Facebook ad. Bring your MLS description forward and map those to two irrefutable principles. And then tell me if maybe you need to flip the script. Because I can tell you this right now, 90% of your audience is indifferent. They're not even thinking of buying or selling. Probably 95% of them. Yet we're running sales rap at them. Guess what you do when you run sales rap at an audience that's indifferent? You turn them into annoyed. See, what we don't do well is we don't segment. You've got to segment. You've got to say the right things to the right people at the right time. Well, until you identify where people are or until you run a couple of different pieces of messaging, certainly you've got conversion messaging that you run out there. But at the same time, tell me about your content amplification. Tell me about your content amplification. And so... You know, the first two things to look at is, do you know your audience? And number two, recognizing the 90-10 rule. The 90% of them, probably 95% are indifferent. And then when you run sales language at them at the wrong time and consistently, you turn them into annoyed. You turn them into annoyed. You think that your objection handler or what you need to say, you know, in the, in the sales process is, is the, the, um, obstruction from your productivity. Well, I'd say you're wrong. I'd say you're wrong. The first part is knowing where people are at and having the segmented language to meet them where they're at. So they can do what human beings like to do. Know you, like you, trust you said it before. Number three, Facebook is not a seeker platform. People don't go to Facebook looking for homes. Now, can you generate leads there? Tons of them. Can you generate revenue? Tons of them. See, people go to Google. Google is a seeker platform. They go there with intention. Folks don't go to Facebook with intention. They go there to socialize. And then what happens is they get interrupted, interrupted by something that feels good, okay? that has a positive emotional impact on them, that pulls them to them. See, you know, does your language in your posts, does the focus of your posts run in that vein? That's the piece that people miss. Seeker platform versus interrupter platform. So you think about this. You've met the, uh, let me describe it nice, the character that shows up at the cocktail party running around, barely knows people to introduce, here's my business card, you should work with me. You know, and I'm being a little bit extreme there in that description. Well, that's the same thing. That's the same way that most agents are behaving 
in the Facebook environment. And sure, they may be getting results. I'd love to see their budget. They're having to throw money at the market and play the big numbers game. You know, here's what I'd rather do in scaling my business. I'd rather invest a low amount of money and get an epic return. And so when you understand these principles and you constantly look at your skill sets in segmenting your audiences and then having a different message go to those audiences, you're going to get an entirely different result. Entirely different result. Um, Next piece is this, when we start talking about what's content amplification versus conversion language. Here's the deal. The reason that we're pushing people away with that sales language because we have not created a condition where they know us, like us, trust us, okay? We've made no deposits in the business relationship equity account. See, we're going to the bank with an ATM card and there's no money in the bank because we've made no deposits. There is absolutely no money in the bank because we've made no deposits. So I want you to remember this. Think about this in your emails that you're sending out, in your nurture campaigns, in your email marketing, um, in your um, Facebook posts, in your Instagram posts. How am I making deposits in the business relationship equity account? And at the end of this video, I'm going to share with you the critical ratio and where you should put your budget. And I'm telling you, putting your budget from working with huge organizations to large teams to single agents that are kicking butt. They're getting huge results with low ad spend. I mean, isn't that kind of what we all want? A very, very low marketing budget and a huge revenue piece that's a result of it. So we've got to make deposits in the business relationship equity account. What will that do for us? Well, that brings us to the next step, and it's the principle of micro-commitment. See, you know, you've heard me talk about people coming to a shopping cart, people coming to your search page, people coming to your home evaluation page. I don't know. I hear numbers from 90 to 95% abandon rate. If you are pixeling your home search page, okay, and you're tracking that along with a thank you page to see how many people land there and how many people actually convert, you're gonna see a huge abandonment rate. And I'll tell you what it's about. It's about the amygdala, it's the fight or flight. So what's happened is people get there and I'm going to give, oh, now they want my data. Well, you haven't built enough trust in them. It's a cold audience. See. You have to warm your audience. So when we go back to the content amplification, when we go back to making deposits in the business relationship equity account, what do you do? Meet your people where they're at. See, I don't know, what is it? Your marketplace is a three to five year turnover right now. Okay, so a three to five year turnover. If it's a three to five year turnover, you know, what time frame are people really in a space where talking about buying or selling real estate, you know, every day or every other day or having that be part of the theme of their life. I don't know. Is it six months? Is it a year? You know, they're going to list their home and get it marketed and get it sold and they've got to buy another one. Okay. Well, that conversation is only relevant for that time frame. Now, do we want to, for the next three to four years in the turnover cycle in our marketplace, give them market updates? Sure, but you've got to shift your language. So what do I mean by making deposits in the business relationship equity account? Be the community information portal. Spotlight on your community weekly. Spotlight on a business weekly. Community events those types of things. And again, at the end of this video, I'm going to share with you a specific case study, the ratios, the budgeting that we looked at as we budget out into a space that gets results versus the spaces and places that most people are failing misery, especially on Facebook. I mean, it is the most opportune time. The boundaries are limitless. You've got to just get your language right. And you've got to get your audiences right. And then you can practically be an order taker. So what we've got to do is we've got to get people to make micro commitments. What's a micro commitment? So, so when you look at someone coming to a search page, when you look at someone coming to a home evaluation page and they've got to fill out the form, here's what they feel like they're doing. You're getting them to make this big leap. They're cold traffic. Jump in and give me your data. Well, 90% of them abandon. 
Do you know, by the way, here's a little tip for you. Do you have your search page pixeled? Do you have a thank you page pixeled so that you can see what percentage of people land on your search page and what percentage of people actually complete it? So then also you can do right-hand column. This is a little tip, okay? Desktop right-hand column retargeting. The simple pieces that work really, really well. So what do we need to do? Well, you're trying to get them to make a big commitment. No, it's about, think about drip email campaigns. Think about, you know, checking in. Think about the, the term nurture. Those are micro commitments. Micro commitments. What's a micro commitment? If I can get someone to consume 30 seconds of my video, I've made a deposit in the business relationship equity account. As long as my message meets them where they're at. Well, you know, we look at this three to five year turnover time frame for the consumer. If that's your market, say it's a five year turnover time frame. Well, four of those years, you've got to meet them where they're at. Well, where are they at? You know, they're, they're, they're raising children. They're involved in the community. Um, you know, they, they want to know about new businesses. You've got to be the information portal. I mean, think about it. How relevant are you when you run real estate sales wrap at people for the next four years after they've just purchased? Now, again, stating that giving them a periodic market snapshot to see what their investment is doing, their asset is doing, certainly. But the language, the message to market match is the thing that's going to change your budget bring it down and take your results through the roof. That's the piece. That's making deposits in the business relationship equity account. You know, uh, what is it? NAR statistics state that I think that 90% of, of all people never hear from their agent again. You wanna know why? Because you don't know what to say. You don't know how to connect with them. So I just wanna really coach you in that space. It's real simple. Keep them updated on the community. Law of association, be the community expert when someone is not in that sales place. You know, and when they start engaging and start asking questions about the market, well, obviously, maybe they get moved over to a different segment. Of course they do. And maybe they start getting a different type of content. Of course they do. Sure they do. It happens all the time. Think about offline when you run into someone. Okay? You just got to shift to where your audience is at, but understanding that this one-size-fits-all is it going to fly when 90 to 95% of your audience is indifferent? That's why people don't like us. That's why people don't like real estate agents. Because all we do is we talk, sell, 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 sell. Cheesy language, cheesy language, cheesy language. Just like you like the shoe salesperson in the retail store when you walk in and they say, can I help you? And you say, no, I'm just looking. That's irrefutable. It's the truth. You walk on a car lot, you walk into any sales environment. I'm just looking. Well, why isn't it any different? And why wouldn't our message be received the same way? Stop fighting human nature. Accommodate the expectations of today's internet empowered consumer. So we want to get them to make a series of micro commitments because if they make a series of micro commitments, if they you know, consume a minute of my video and then next week they read an email that's informational, what's happening is I'm making deposits, okay? I'm building trust, all right? If you're using video as you should, this is 2017, okay? You're leveraging yourself by parasocial behavior, which is an unconscious relationship connection that will take place, okay? I'm gonna tell you something. What happens is you're seeding the next step. You're seeding the next step. There can't be gaps, it needs to be consistent. Okay, it needs to be the right message and it needs to be the right frequency. Why do I want to see the next step? Well, because if I see the next step, well, my competition is running sales rap at them saying, buy from me, fill out this form. Well, you know what? I'm consistent. Okay, I'm leveraging myself by systems and processes. Okay, and what happens is as they consume more of my content. As I build more trust with them, the connectivity goes to a level that my competition, who's got the magical script, the magical dialogue, the in-their-face sales thing that, that totally annoys them, okay, is going to be history. See, because here's what I want to work towards. I want to go back to what I started with. 
Everyone wants to buy. No one wants to be sold. We choose with our heart. We justify with logic. It's irrefutable. And so guess what happens when I am working with someone? They take the next obvious step naturally. They don't have to be sold into it. And, and what's the benefit of that? Well, here's the big benefit of that. The quality of your lead is based on how they come in. The more you have to sell someone, the lower quality the lead, period. The more you have built trust with someone, the more you have given them value along the way, the higher the quality to lead. The more micro commitments, the more consumption of your content that they've taken in, the higher the quality of the lead, the greater level of trust, and the higher level of conversions that you're going to get. It's just proven. So the final piece that I want to share with you is a recent case study. And here it is front and center. And there are, geez, I don't know how many, there's a number of people that um, I know will watch this video. Um, and if they comment, they comment, if they don't, they don't, but they, they subscribe to this 100%. They're probably running about 75% content amplification and only 25% conversion language. In other words, with call to action. See all this training of you got to ask. It never hurts to ask. Well, guess what? Today it hurts to ask because if you ask at the wrong time, okay, if you ask at the wrong time, People can constantly move away from uncomfortable salespeople into a very comfortable space to gather information. So I'll give you a recent case study. And so I work with people 12 week time frames. And so from week to week, as I am starting with someone that says, hey, I want to optimize my, my online marketing. And, and many times, of course, it's Facebook, people trying to figure that one out. And I said, okay, great. You know, the first thing I say is we need to move towards almost like abandoning, you know, I'll, I'll take a look at what they're doing. And it's like all sales language, all sales language. I says, here's what I need to ask you to do. Stop asking people to buy or sell from you for the next two weeks. We need to warm up your audience. We need to get people to see that you're truly an information portal. You're not just another real estate agent trying to sell them something. Okay. We're looking to position ourselves as someone that is an information portal, someone they can trust, someone that's a guide. See, you know the mistake is you're out there trying to be a hero. No one wants a hero. People want a guide. Okay. So what we would do is I pull people totally away from conversion language and move them purely to content amplification, community events, spotlight on businesses, blogs that are informational. And we'll do that, just purely focus on that. Then when we warm up the audience, see, we've built trust with them. See, we think we can just throw an ad on Facebook and get a lead. How come I'm not getting leads? Well, why is it any different? The principles are, are of uh, the, the psychology of sales online and offline, the same. Exactly the same. It's still human beings. What is it? We're Martians when we're online, but we're humans when we're offline? No, it's human behavior. You got to think about that. Period. So I'll give you an example just recently. So we'll measure, we pixel all of the websites of my clients. You know, they have the Facebook pixel on there. We'll take a look at the traffic to the site. We'll take a look at the traffic to the um, home search page, home evaluation page, lead pages, the thank you page to see how many go there and convert. So let me give you this example and I hope you capture it. So one week we're running 75% of our ads, 75% of our budget is home search, home evaluation, come by and 25% of the budget and ad spend focus is on content amplification. And in other words, making deposits in the business relationship equity account. In other words, an informational blog, an informational video, an interview, okay, on a company, so, or a new business. So 75% is, of, of the budget and the ad focus that week in the post is buy from me conversion type stuff and 25% is content amplification. So we look at our activity. Great. 
Those were our numbers this week. Now let's test it. Let's flip our budget around. Let's flip our ratio and, and let's go 50% conversion based, but 50% informational. Oh my gosh, I don't want to waste my money not asking people to buy or sell. Oh my gosh, I need to have a call to action. <laughs> That's called dinosaur online marketing. Dinosaur online marketing. Guess what happened? When we lowered the amount of conversion sales language, and it's well-written copy, very well-written copy, but it is still a sales type language. When we took the sales language ratio, the budget number of ads from 75% to 50%, and we took the content amplification, the deposits in the business relationship equity account, the information on the community, the events that are taking place in the community, and we raised them from 25 to 50%. Okay, so we doubled that amount. Guess what happened the next week? Our leads generated went up 50%. 50%. And it happens time and time again. So here's what I want to encourage you to do is, is number one, you know, there's this program that's running in your head that thinks you need to sell people. Well, no like trust. Those are basic human principles. Don't you want to know someone? Don't you want to like someone? Don't you want to trust them before they sell you something? I do. I'm not saying it's for everyone, but it's kind of a pretty general foundation for people in the decisioning process. Just been my experience. Where does that say sell or sale in there? Nowhere. But the sale is a result of that. Look at your content. Look at what you're posting. Look at your videos. Look at the ratio. Here's my coaching to you. In the Facebook ads environment, in the recruiting environment, in your email drip campaign environment, okay? 75% of your budget, 75% of your content, your ads, your messaging, have it be deposit-based. Have it be content amplification. Be the information portal. Stop worrying about your call to action. I work with online marketers. I sit in, in masterminds with these people that spend millions and millions of dollars on marketing. <laughs> and they know what can happen. They can create audience fatigue. You keep running, see, you keep running the sales rapid people, you're going to create a condition of audience fatigue. You keep running sales rapid people, you're going to create a condition of audience fatigue. You want to warm your audience up. You want to pull them to you. You want to build trust so that when they do move into the space of, you know, I need to think about buying or selling, you are the next logical action step that they need to take, whether to click on a post, a Facebook message you, fill out a form on your website, shoot you a text or call you, make deposits in the business relationship equity account, stay consistent, okay? Look at your sequence, segment your folks. Your sales will go up and your marketing budget will go down dramatically. Thanks for watching the video. Thanks for joining me. And here's the deal. The training didn't take place here. The training takes place when or if you decide to take action because action takers win. Talk to you later.